Hey guys, it's Vic! So last week, I made a very definitely, uh, extremely serious video about why Camp Triggerfish won't be in Splatoon 3, and I said at the end of that video that I'd say what maps I think we might see in the next game. Keep in mind that in Splatoon 2, we had 9 maps return, and then the other 14 were brand new, for a total of 23 maps. I'll be going through 10 maps that I think could return, plus a couple of honorable mentions. The first pick that I could see is actually Mahi Mahi Resort. The gimmick of this map was always that it had rising and dropping water levels. Imagine if, due to being abandoned, they stopped filling the pool! If the resort is no longer being used, we'd have no water hazards, as well as a medium-sized open map for both Inklings and Octolings to fight on. As this map was a fan favorite in Splatoon 1, I think a lot of fans would be more than happy to see it return. Given the longer development cycle allowed for Splatoon 3, it feels like this game might be the one that tries to improve on some of the maps left behind in the first game. And this also allows me to talk about number 2, which is Bluefin Depot. This map was already in pretty poor shape. It also does a good job at matching the theme of the new game pretty well. It's clearly divided into two halves, which would be great for spawning into from the sky. Because this map incorporated an open feel, while also having tight spaces for low range players to fight in, it'd be fun to see how new players fare on the map. If the development team is willing to repath the tower control path, I think that this map could be a great candidate for entry into Splatoon 3. Alright, number 3, Urchin Underpass. Hear me out on this. Inklings need a way to travel. We know there are cars in the game already from Morai Towers. Transportation seems to be a pretty big deal in Splatoon 3, so why not have the transportation map? It's literally an underpass. Given that it's also the flagship map for the franchise in Mario Kart 8, and we know that Nintendo is trying to give this game a lot of that Splatoon 1 vibe, at least in the trailer, it would make sense to try and include Urchin Underpass. One more Splatoon 1 map, and I swear, we'll get to a couple of those Splatoon 2 maps too. We got number 4, Flounder Heights. If Inkopolis is no longer the freshest place to go, what if the apartment complex located at Flounder Heights is also no longer needed? And the idea of being able to spawn onto the top of the buildings instead of the bottom seems really fun, especially if it leads to a lot of early game team fights. Since it's been at least three and a half years in the game universe since the end of Splatoon 1, as two years have passed between Splatoon 1 and 2, and one and a half years have been confirmed to pass between 2 and 3, there would have been plenty of time for some chaotic cephalopods to take over the place. Besides, you know, uh, the Splatlands is gonna have their own apartment complex that we definitely will be able to use, please, Nintendo. So I, I, I don't see why we can't just, you know, change things up on Flounder Heights, R right? <laughs> All right, number five, Gobi Arena. This bad boy is gonna get the Triggerfish treatment. It's gonna be in Splatoon 3. It's indoors, meaning it would need minimal reconstruction of the background. All the devs need to do is rebuild it, and they'll have what could be a very functional map in Splatoon 3. Will it be good? Who knows? Currently, it's pretty difficult for a team on the losing side to make a comeback, just because of how the map is shaped. Wanna go into the court? Well, it's not hard for the enemy team to look from every vantage point because the map's main feature is that everything slopes down to the center. If they change how the elevation works, maybe like putting the main court higher a la humpback, it might work a lot better. And that leads really well to number five, which actually is humpback pump track. Honestly, it's a map that most players like. It's common in tournaments. The zone is big. I can't see the development team getting rid of it. But I do worry they might try to overcomplicate the map in the next game by adding too many hazards that might take away the map's fluidity. The joy of Humpback Pump Track is the fact that it's easy to navigate. If they keep that fluidity in the map between this game and Splatoon 3, Humpback Pump Track will still be loved in the future. And now, here's number 7. We got Walleye Warehouse. It's indoors. It was the first map of Splatoon 1. It was barely reworked from Splatoon 2. I feel like if Nintendo is going to try and keep an old map alive, it, it's gonna be Walleye. It's not viable in its current state, and I'm not sure how it will be in Splatoon 3, but I just can't see them getting rid of it. We might see this map return later into the game's lifespan and not at launch, just so people think it's gone. And then, just when you think you're safe, ah, uh no, -uh, no, well, he's back in rotation. Surprise! Could a moving element prevent the map from being so linear? 
I don't know, but maybe they'll try that next. Number eight, we got good old Salt Spray, the other oldest map in the game. Just like with Flounder Heights, it's been a little while for poor old Salt Spray. Is this land still being used as an oil rig? If projects being done at Salt Spray Rig have been abandoned, wouldn't that just make it a good addition for Splatoon 3? Salt Spray Rig is a map that's divided. As long as the map gets fixed, I could see this one coming along for the ride in Splatoon 3. Just like with Bluefin Depot, giving players the power to drop in where they please within reasoning could make matches on Salt Spray really exciting to watch. And number nine, we got Sturgeon Shipyard. Sturgeon is just one of those maps that people just don't have a problem with. It's good for long rangers, it's good for aggressive players, it's good for people who just want something to do. It's exciting to take advantage of the high ground and the greats. It's fun to push the Rainmaker across one of the different paths. There's a lot of good that can be said about Sturgeon. Maybe they'll add some kind of Splatoon 3 exclusive single player mobility option to it, like how Moray Towers and Triggerfish got ink lines. It fits the aesthetic very well, but the main issue is that it's kind of close to the water. Y you can see the edge of the shoreline from the preview render of the map, but I feel like this map, despite that issue, could make it into Splatoon 3. And the two honorable mentions I have also fall into this category, but first, we got number 10. You know that we can't escape the one and only Moray Towers. Or would it be two and only, seeing as this map takes advantage of two separate towers? <laughs> Either way, Moray Towers has a lot going for it, which would make it a strong candidate to return in Splatoon 3. If we're gonna continue to believe that Splatoon 3 is taking a lot of its identity from Splatoon 1, as opposed to Splatoon 2, it would make sense to bring Moray Towers back. It was popular enough to become the map that we see in Super Smash Bros., and it's arguably one of the most recognizable maps in the game. Moray Towers Splat Zones mode was completely revamped from Splatoon 1 to Splatoon 2, and the setup for Clam Blitz, I would argue, is probably one of the most unique in the game. The question is, can Nintendo make Moray Towers more functional, or will it still just be a sniper haven? Is that even a bad thing? It'd make sense to still have some maps where the snipers can perform really well on, like the bow. On top of that, you can't forget about the cars! If Inklings can take cars to get to the Splatlands, and we know that some of the species in the game can drive, what is stopping an Inkling or Octoling from just traveling to Moray in Splatoon 3? In my opinion, not much. That's what keeps this map viable in my opinion, even if I'm not really much of a Moray fan. Now, I do have a couple of honorable mentions, but first, we have to make an assumption, because there's something we just don't know. How far away can Inklings travel? How far can they super jump? It can be assumed they can't just super jump from Inkopolis to the Splatlands, seeing as our main character takes the train to actually get to the main area. So let's allow for a hypothetical here. Could they travel long distance with certain restraints? Like they have to be doing it for a turf war? How does travel even work when we're going from the lobby to the maps in our matches? That's something which is never explained in Splatoon. We just swim out of the spawn. If in Splatoon 2 we're all flying to the maps, why can't we just fly to any map that we want, even if it's far away? If that's the case, Piranha Pit, abandoned but atop the water, could come back again even if it's no longer in use. Piranha Pit matches the aesthetic of Splatoon 3 really well, minus the water. The same thing goes for Snapper Canal. It's an open, unique map that could be reworked to be a better battleground in the next game. If the development team is willing to put so much effort to save maps like Camp Triggerfish and Moray when transitioning to Splatoon 2, what's stopping them from trying to fix Snapper Canal for the next game? That's everything I have to say about the future of Splatoon 3 and the maps that we might see. I think beyond these ones, we probably won't see any other returning maps, but we will get some new ones. I'm super stoked to see the ideas that Nintendo will put into this game and see how they work alongside returning picks. If you enjoyed listening, please subscribe and check out my other Splatoon content. There'll be more soon, so thank you so much for your support. <laughs> and as a side note, this video is now timed hilariously, seeing as Squidman just ripped apart my Triggerfish video as a joke, and Dude also just made one of these videos, just like mine. So I've linked both their videos below to give you even more map-related Splatoon content. Yay! G Goodbye! Go watch those, or my video, or some other Splatoon stuff.
Have a good day. This video is now done.